everything is dulled by overuse. When you do something the first time, it has a special quality that is unique and its features stand out in your mind, but when you do it or hear it over and over and over again, you start to lose the ability to see it as special. This is one of the characteristics of children that adults begin to lose. It's one of the reasons why there is a Jewish principle called tadir usha'eno tadir, tadir kodem. If something is frequent and something is infrequent, the frequent thing is more important because we tend to think the otherwise, the other way, that that which is rare is special and that which is everyday is everyday. In this week's Torah portion, the very first phrase is Vayikra el Moshe. God calls to Moses. Now, if you read the Torah or you come to synagogue, you hear God speaks to Moses a billion times. And there is nothing special about it. You read it over and over and over and over again. And maybe you don't think about what could that possibly mean that God speaks to Moses. In fact, in this week's parsha, in this week's reading, the very first word of the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, has a very, very small aleph. It's an anomaly that has been noticed for thousands of years in the scrolls and in your book. All the letters are this size, and then the very last letter, the aleph, is that size. And the usual interpretation of this among the rabbis is it shows Moses' humility. Even though God was speaking to him, Moses still stayed very humble, which you can imagine is difficult. You come home after a long day of work, what did you do? I went to the market, what did you do? Well, God talked to me, <laughs> which is not easy to both absorb and also to be diffident about. But I want to switch it around and say maybe this isn't so much about Moses, it's more about God. After all, if we imagine whatever way you imagine that God communicates to Moses, it's got to be pretty overwhelming. And what if what it's saying is that it's subtle, that it's not overwhelming, that it is not the rhetorical equivalent of God taking Moses by the collar and shaking him and insisting that he listen, but that God speaks softly. We have a precedent for this, as you may remember. When Elijah is standing on the mountain, it says there's a wind, but God's not in the wind, and there's an earthquake, and God's not in the earthquake, and then God is in a kol de mama daka, which literally translated means a thin voice of silence. So if God speaks so softly, how is it heard? And this gets to us. We don't know what God is or how God speaks. The one thing we do know, according to the Torah, is that all of us are in the image of God. And we know how we speak. So I'd like for a moment to take the Aleph as a model. Because in my experience, and especially I would say in the last 10, 15, 20 years of our country, the way that you speak to somebody and grip their soul is not with a little olive. You scream, you yell, you make sure that they hear you. Because if you speak softly, you assume they won't. So how is it that God knew that Moses would listen if God spoke softly? And here, I think, is the essence of it. 
is that God did not speak to a piece of Moses. God didn't talk to the part of Moses that was political or to the part of Moses that was familial or to the part of Moses that was worried or to the part of Moses that was anxious or the part of Moses that was gifted, just spoke to all of Moses. Remember what it says at the end of the Torah, that Moses was the only one who saw God panim el panim, face to face. Now think about the way we speak to each other. When we talk to each other, what are we really doing? The listener is thinking about what they're going to say as the speaker is speaking. Or, in the case of a congregation and a rabbi, what they're going to have for lunch. But we always have this like line of type at the bottom of the screen that is our own thoughts that are unrelated to what is being said to us. And part of the reason that's so is because we're only speaking to a part of the person. So we only engage a part of the person. It is possible at certain moments, in certain times, to have what Buber calls an I-thou encounter. In other words, all of me is speaking to all of you. I don't have an agenda for you. I don't need you to do something for me. I just need you. I just need to express the fullness of my soul to the fullness of your soul without any further elaboration, idea, agenda, promise. Think about the world we live in and how rarely people even intend to speak to other people that way. We talk instrumentally. If I say this, I'm going to get that person to do that. And if I don't get them to do that, then I failed in my communication with them. Because an effective communication strategy means the other person both hears you and does what you want. But that's a communication strategy. And I'm talking about an encounter. When God speaks to Moses, it fills Moses up because God speaks to all of Moses. But when we speak to each other, we drop messages in the buckets of the other person's personality and we don't speak to the entirety of their being and we lose so much. Because if you think of those moments, whenever they were, that you spoke to someone and they spoke to you and you were fully present, you know that it was infinitely more valuable than the time that you spoke to somebody and successfully got them to do X, Y, or Z. But it requires that you see the other person not as a means to something, but as an image of God, as a full soul, as somebody that you can connect to, panim el panim, face to face. You know, the last two weeks, because I thought I really had no choice, I gave sermons about the Ukraine, about Ukraine and what was happening there. And when I was thinking about what I would speak about this Shabbat, I thought, you know what? Everybody is hearing about Ukraine everywhere in the world, on every television broadcast, on every podcast, in every discussion at a restaurant. Why are people coming to Shul? They're not coming to hear more about Ukraine. They're coming to hear about the soul. Because you won't hear about that on television or in podcasts. But you have one, and it needs other souls to fill it up. So this week, as you go about the world and you engage in all the necessary building of whatever structures of life you need to build with the help of whoever you need, also remember 
that you have both the opportunity and also the tremendous inexpressible joy of just encountering another human being just for who they are and who you are. And I'll just close by telling you what Buber used to say, that every time you have an I, thou encounter, every time you fully encounter another human being, God is present. Whatever God is, that magical alchemy that makes two people together more than two people together. That's God. Vayikra, who calls to us. If we, like Moses, have the humility and the openness and the vulnerability and the wisdom and the love to listen. Shabbat Shalom.